Just got done tatting the taff. I actually tatted most of it earlier and then I had to run to town for something and then I just did that across the ditch. It's a lot thinner over there, so I didn't really lose too much there. Uh, I did just, it looks pretty, looking pretty dry here on top. Good stuff. And that's actually, I don't know if you can see the water on there, that's actually still wet, like, visibly see water on it not just green a lot of what i heard is it it's hard to get dry really deceiving really because it's super dry on top and then you have this right under it i cut it pretty high there's some pretty good stubble out here you think it dry okay still but we are extremely high humidity unlike the first cutting this will be day number two of tedding uh this is sunday I cut the teff on a Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. I just tedded it yesterday. Uh, yesterday was Thursday. Yesterday was Saturday. I tedded it yesterday. Didn't do anything else. I'm going to ted it today. And I'm also uh, the thinner part of it, I think, might bail today. So I might try to bail a little bit today. So we're going to go ted. Get back up here. We're going to unhook that. We're going to hook up the rake to the beast of a tractor here and yes you guys guessed it that was my surprise for you guys 6150 Deutz Alice air-cooled three-cylinder diesel engine 54 horsepower uh, nothing fancy uh, it's definitely small which is really what I was wanting something small easy to haul if I need to haul it on a trailer uh, easy on fuel uh, easy to get around and I just needed something to Ted and rake with uh, and I could bail with it too, but for the time being, tedding and raking is going to be this tractor's main job. Uh, so let's get to tedding. <laughs> Got this awesome hay tedding machine. It's a Krona or a Krone, however you want to say it. It's a 5.52 4x7T KW. That means it's 5.52 meters wide. It's a four basket, got seven teeth bars on each star. It's awesome, it's a great, it's great. It does, does pretty good. Unless you're Ted and Taff, look at this. I cannot get it to not throw it in a windrow. I mean, it's still doing a good job of fluffing it. Uh, you can see I've done these two, these two, those two. That has not been done. See how flat that is. So, I mean, it is helping it dry, but I want it to spread it. It just won't do it. I've tried every adjustment. Uh, I actually tried lowering the tether and flattening it out so it's not thrown up, which is actually supposed to be less aggressive, but I thought, well, what the heck? So I tried it. First time I ever made this adjustment, they give you this, this handy dandy tool right here. It needs to be about twice that long, unless you're 400 pounds, then it'd probably be all right. I don't weigh enough. See, if, I, if, if it was, if you had to pick up on it to raise it up, I could do it. But you have to pull down on it, and I only have so much weight. This is where the tool goes on this arm. You see a pin up here. Right here, you gotta pull this pin. You gotta take the pressure off, you gotta pull this pin, you gotta lift it up, you gotta put this pin down here to be more aggressive. It's not impossible. If you had two people, it wouldn't be a problem, but what's the purpose of having a toolless job that you have to have two people to do? Here I am, about 90% humidity, can't get my hay dry. I'm out here trying to adjust this when I should be tedding to get hay dry. Sweating my nuts off, and uh, I'm not real happy right now. Be the last time I ever adjust this. I've adjusted it once. This time right here, last time. 
This thing will never be adjusted ever again because it is a pain in the butt. Corona, shame on you for making something like this. So now they have a plate, an extra spot to wear out that is not even really practical to make an adjustment. So shame on you, Corona. You're supposed to be top of the line, best you can buy. Shame on you. The freaking tether will not even spread the crop. All right, enough of my ranting. Let's just let you guys watch me try to adjust this thing. And uh, y'all can laugh, whatever you want to do. I'm pretty freaking frustrated right now. I would be extremely angry if I paid more for the Corona than the other tether I wanted. But I didn't. That's why I bought the Corona. Because it was supposed to be really good tether, and for the money, it was really good. So I'm, I'm still not going to say that I'm unhappy with my purchase. I'm just saying I could be happier. This is all my weight right here. Can't do it. I gotta get my feet on here. And then I gotta I gotta pull up on this. Well, the problem is you gotta be able to do that while you're pulling the pin. Try to get my knees on it, which is really, really painful. Gotta get down here. Gotta make sure you don't drop it on your hand and break something. So now I got the pin out. Now comes the hard part. I'm actually getting it adjusted and getting the pin back in. So now I'm going to try to do it with my feet because if I don't do it with my feet, it's way too hard. <sighs> I can't reach the pin. Oh. Okay. Like I said, that the last time this bar will ever be used on this machine while I have it. After we get that adjusted, you gotta crank this here so they actually pick the hay up off the ground. Otherwise you'll lose, you'll leave strips behind. Most importantly, whatever you run on with the tires on the tractor gets left behind because you just ran it over. It is Monday, everything was cut on Friday and uh, I checked it Saturday and Sunday I've tetted it every day after I cut so Saturday Sunday today and you see here behind me I'm starting to rake a windrow I actually I think it's still a little tough and I always like to rake right before I bail but I think I may actually have to go ahead and rake it the, the issue I'm having is hear me say in my earlier videos the first cutting was all, you know, low humidity, which is odd for us. Now our humidity's up, probably 70 or 80 percent, and it's in the low to mid 90s. I'm not going to rake everything, but I am going to rake a, a, a little bit. And I'm going to let it sit as long as I can, and I'm going to go ahead and try bailing a few bales today, just see what it feels like in the bale. And I wouldn't worry about it, but the weather is so. I mean, you can look at your weather app every hour. Every hour it's different. Yesterday, I looked at it four or five times. And uh, one time, there was no rain. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rain Thursday. And then an hour later, there was 50% chance of rain on Monday, 40% on Tuesday, no rain Wednesday, and then Thursday, it was like 80%. Well, then now today, uh, I went to bed last night thinking it was gonna rain today, and then today, not supposed to rain there's always a chance of a pop-up with all this humidity that's in the air all the energy uh, basically a storm can can pop up anywhere at any time and you have no idea when it's gonna happen so you know if, if I can get it to bail I'm gonna bail it and even if I can't get it to bail maybe it'll dry a little bit in the windrow it's actually looks like it does right now ever since Saturday the day after I cut it
just started bailing here. This is the first bail after we just had really, well, the chair was completely empty, so this first bail is really always really loose. At the end of this run, we'll probably be up to about 25 bales. Uh, this is a kind of a test run, and it is right on the verge. And, you know, if I knew for sure it was going to rain tomorrow, I would probably go ahead and bail. Um, but I don't want it to be questionable. Uh, I sell it to horse people, and, you know, if, if there's any mold in it, they're, they're pretty well over it. And with this being a different kind of hay than what I normally sell, I want the first experience to be a good experience. So, uh, I'm just going to stop and we're going to resume tomorrow. Hopefully we can get it a little bit drier. I, I Like I said, I really think we're, we're kind of to that point where it's about as dry as it's going to get. So, hope, hopefully not. Hopefully it goes ahead and dries out. But, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. I don't think it's gonna be big, big yielding. I got too many areas that are thin, like this right here. I have some areas that are nice and thick, like this area over here is all thick. But then down here along the ditch, you see how spaced out these bales are down here. I'm gonna check a few more bales here, and we're gonna head to the house, and I'll get a trailer and come out and load these so the dew's not getting on them. all the night.